Hi everybody, today we're going to be going over a normal CT exam of the abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast. Um, just a disclaimer, in radiology our right is the patient's left and our left is the patient's right. Just a reminder, this is the left side and this is the right side. So we're going to go ahead and start. The first thing I do is I just take a quick scan through the exam and then I go ahead and actually start looking at the individual organs. So I start off by looking at the solid organs first. First one on the list is the liver. I'm going to evaluate the right hepatic lobe and then the left hepatic lobe and the liver is normal in contour, it's normal in size, it's normal in density, so it's normal. I'm going to look at the spleen from top to bottom, same thing, normal in size, normal in contour, normal in density. We're going to look for the pancreas, looking for the pancreatic tail, which is usually at the splenic hilum, here it is, and we're going to follow it medially and look at the whole pancreas. And that's normal. This is the head, and this is the pancreatic unxinate process. Everything is normal. Move on to the gallbladder over here, this fluid-filled sac, and that's normal. No gallstones, no kind of gallbladder wall thickening, nothing like that. Lastly, for the solid organs, somewhat lastly, adrenal gland. This is the right adrenal gland, this kind of inverted V or inverted Y. Here's the base. Here is the medial limb and the lateral limb. That's the right adrenal gland, and the left adrenal gland also looks normal. Then we're going to look on at the genitourinary system, starting off the kidneys. So the left kidney here. No kind of focal mass, no dilation of the collecting system, proximally. On the right, it's the same thing, pretty normal. On this patient, she has enough intra-abdominal fat that we should be able to follow the ureters throughout their course. So here is the right ureter, and we're going to follow it. No abnormal dilation. Here it's hard to see, and it's hard to see here as well. But it's not dilated, so it's most likely normal. We can do the same on the left side. We find the ureter and we follow it distally, and here it is. And no kind of abnormal dilation. It's normal to get a little bit dilated as it uh, crosses into the pelvic brim. And hard to see here, but it's not dilated, so it's most likely normal. The bladder is distended with urine. There's no abnormal wall thickening, no blood, nothing abnormal here. And this is a female patient, so we're going to evaluate the uterus. This is a normal physiologic appearing uterus. The left ovary and the right ovary here. Here we have a little uh, faintly rim enhancing cystic structure, and this is most compatible with a collapsing physiologic cyst. Here's the cervix and then the vaginal canal with a little bit of air here anterior to the rectum. We're going to come back up top and we're going to evaluate the gastrointestinal system. So here's the distal esophagus, the gastroesophageal junction, no hiatal hernia. Here's the stomach with a little diverticulum and we're going to follow the stomach into the antrum and pylorus and here's the first portion of the duodenum and we're going to follow it back here and the duodenum is going to cross medially and that means there's no malposition and here we don't follow the small bowel specifically but we look in the left abdomen and evaluate the small bowel generally so just looking at the small bowel there's no picture of any kind of obstruction. I don't see really any abnormal small bowel wall thickening. Really small bowel looks pretty unremarkable. We'll do the same thing, just evaluating the right abdomen generally for the small bowel. And again, small bowel looks pretty normal. 
Then we're going to evaluate the large bowel, and I like to start from the rectum and go proximally. So here we have the rectum, the sigmoid colon with some stool, no diverticular disease. And we're going to follow the large bowel superiorly. This is the descending colon into the transverse colon. Here we have the splenic flexure. We're in the transverse colon now, and again, no kind of abnormal bowel wall thickening or bowel wall mass. And ascending colon and cecum. And here is the appendix. You can see the blind ending tube over here, and it will be coming right off of the cecum, right over here. You can also look for the terminal ilium, and this is it right here. It has a fatty lips, the ileocecal valve, and we can see here is the terminal ilium coming into the cecum and the ileocecal valve. There's normal mesenteric vascularity. There's no congestion. There are no inflammatory changes of the mesenteric fat. The fat should look, you know, if we look at more subcutaneous fat over here, this is a normal density of fat. Normal density of fat, normal density of fat here with some vessels coursing through the mesenteric fat. So all of that looks pretty normal. Next we're going to evaluate the vasculature. So first I look at the hepatic veins and the portal veins. So we have our right, middle, and left hepatic vein. And then we have our right portal vein, our left portal vein, and our main portal vein with the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. <clears throat> We're going to evaluate the larger arteries, so the aorta, the celiac artery, oh, never mind, that's the superior mesenteric artery and this is the celiac artery right next to each other. Here we have it's a little difficult to see, but the origins of the right renal artery and the left renal artery, and more inferiorly, origin of the inferior mesenteric artery, and we'll just follow the aorta more distally into the right iliac chain, coming down here, and then the left iliac chain, we'll follow that coming up and everything looks pretty normal. We're going to look for lymphadenopathy now, so I follow the iliac chains and look for any kind of abnormal lymph nodes. These are what normal lymph nodes look like, these little speckles of soft tissue that come, they blip in and out as you scroll through them. These are normal sized, normal appearing lymph nodes. We're going to follow posterior iliac chain on the right, posterior or internal iliac chain on the left, external iliac chain on the left, and again just some normal appearing normal size superficial inguinal lymph nodes here. And we're going to follow the aorta up, look for any kind of paraaortic lymph nodes, and there's nothing abnormal. We're going to look at the porta hepatis for any abnormal lymph nodes, and then through the abdomen for any abnormal lymph nodes. And here Here's an example of a lymph node, lymph node, here's, oh, that's not one, here's one. These just small soft tissue structures that blip in and out as you scroll up and down. So we've covered pretty much everything in the abdomen. We do capture a little bit of the um, lungs and the heart, so we're going to evaluate those as well. So we put it on lung window, and I'm going to look at the lung bases posteriorly, anteriorly, posteriorly, anteriorly, and nothing suspicious. Look at the uh, inferior portion of the heart, and nothing, suspe nothing suspicious, it looks normal in size. We're going to look at the anterior wall, and the sub superficial subcutaneous tissues look normal, evaluating the musculature and the subcutaneous tissues on the right and that looks normal. We'll go towards the left 
and the muscles and superficial subcutaneous tissues look normal, and then posteriorly. And everything looks pretty normal. Lastly, we're going to look through the spinal canal and the neuroforamina, the left, right neuroforamina, left neuroforamina, and there's no obvious spinal canal narrowing or spinal cord mass, and that all looks good. Lastly, we'll come back to the top and we'll evaluate the patient in bone window. Again, looking at the ribs on the right and then on the left. We're going to evaluate this little bit of sternum and then the vertebral column. These are thoracic vertebrae coming down towards the lumbar vertebrae and everything looks pretty good. Evaluating the sacroiliac joints, the sacrum, and the osseous structures of the pelvis and nothing acute or suspicious. Lastly, we'll take one more look at the spinal cord in the sagittal view and again no obvious spinal cord narrowing or spinal cord mass. And we'll look at the bones and the facets line up nicely. Spinous processes line up nicely and the facets on the other side line up nicely. Vertebral bodies are normal in height and there's no kind of suspicious osseous lesion. So this is a normal exam of the abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to see anything else, let me know. Uh, if you like the video, then click the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more, then subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much.